So we're going to get some things kicked off. We've got a lot of things going today, John, for you and Edie. And when we're through, we hope you understand how much we love you and appreciate everything you've done. And to kick us off, we have two people that are going to talk about this thing kind of getting started and what their, uh, what their understanding uh, of it is. So I'm going to call Sydney Hefner and Mayor Rutherford up to talk a little bit about how they, they got, how they were, uh, watched y'all get this thing started and get it going. So. All right, I hope you guys can hear me. I'm actually going to start this off real quick with a little city business. Um, I have a proclamation from the town of Langley, and I am hereby proclaiming today, March 27th, John Sumner. The town of Langley wishes to recognize John Sumner for his valuable service to our community. Whereas nearly 20 years ago, John found what he called his playground below the Pensacola Dam. And he decided to share and celebrate this with his friends and family. Through his work and his word of mouth and tireless efforts, he created Rock Crawling Haven for all. Whereas John has created the BMR, the Big Meat Run, which has enhanced the outdoor sports arena. He brings in over 600 enthusiasts attending the rally and bringing in over <coughs> 10,000 spectators from around the United States. Whereas John's energy and enthusiasm for off-road sports has created an economic boom for Langley and the Grand Lake area, and the citizens are glad to support you and greatly appreciate you. So I, Margaret Rutherford, the mayor of the town of Langley, do hereby proclaim March 27th as John Sumner Day and urge all citizens to celebrate. Can I get my autograph, John? And then, <laughs> and then one of our businesses heard that I was doing this today, and so Carlos Montez across the street has given me a $50 gift card for you and your family to eat on while you're here this weekend. <laughs> All right, now let's talk about the history. <laughs> back in February of 2000, so we are going back 15 years ago, I drove five ladies, so I made number six. So six women went to a program put on by the Oklahoma Tourism Recreation Department. And it was called the Oklahoma Trail Symposium. We went down there with one purpose, and that was to build a walking trail. I came home from that project and learned about all these different possibilities because I met two very important gentlemen that were on the um, advisory board at that time. A gentleman by the name of Stormy Sims, who was kind of designated for motorcycles. And again, a gentleman named Tim, Tim and I always say this last name right because I don't remember Tim, but I think it's Tim Lab. And he was over the four-wheel drives. And these two guys said, there's this great playground right there in your backyard. And they said, we're going to get you in touch with some people because you need to know about this. So out of this event, not only did we go down there to build a walking trail, but we came back learning about these trial bikes, which that was a whole new experience for me. And then we learned a little bit about these vehicles, these Jeeps, these four-wheelers that were coming down and crawling on the rocks. And so it's really exciting because, like I said, anytime you can go and do something like that to improve your community, and like I said, you go for one purpose and you come back with three outcomes, it's just phenomenal. But what really got involved was about a year later when there started being some problems in the community, and that's when two girls got involved. And I'm going to call Cindy Hepner up here to continue this on. <laughs> well, first off, uh, these four days around the meat run are really exciting for all of us locals. It's kind of like a four-day Christmas parade because you just see the four-wheelers coming in day after day, and that's really exciting. But it hasn't always been that way. As Margaret mentioned in the beginning, there were a couple of issues, and John was very instrumental um, in helping us resolve those and for the four-wheeling to be able to continue. One of those, actually GRDA wasn't so sure about this. They're concerned with the liability, the safety, and what's this going to do to the water quality. So my general manager, I work for REC, the electric company, he said, Cindy, go out there Saturday, find somebody, ride with them, and see what's going on. I said, okay. <laughs> so I called my good friend, the mayor, and I said, you're going with me. So she calls John. John agrees to let us climb in. So somehow I was the fortunate one that uh, got to ride with John in the blue crawler, I remember, I don't know, whatever it was called, and Margaret went with another one. Um, Margaret has a video. She videoed that day, and that was, um, oh I kind of watched it. Yeah, how we get to the <laughs> 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 
Next thing I know, here comes Edie running in the door. She gives me. Okay, something's got to stop here. I said, what? I said, they just picked up John. <laughs> what? <laughs> anyway, uh, they uh, stopped him, and of course they won Larry, so Larry didn't know. And I get on the phone to call Larry, and Larry comes down here, and we have a powwow. It ended nice, real nice. Um, but as far as... Yes, there was some differences with GRDA, and uh, I think he just shocked them. Just absolutely, they went into shock. And they were kind of hard on them. You guys were kind of hard on them at first. <laughs> and I told Edie, I said, all you gotta do is just go get an event for men, and they will leave you alone, and they will be happy. And that's exactly what they did. So it ended up nice, you know, but uh, we've had some fun, and uh, on behalf of Disney, I have got something that we want to give you if you'd like to come up and do that. Uh, in appreciation for uh, Disney as the mayor of Disney and also the president of Grand Lake Fireworks, we want to present you with this flag. gets to come up by himself. Edie, from now on, we need you up here. You're a, you're, you're a big part of this deal, and you need to be up here, and, and we want to honor both of you. So, so from now on, we've got things to give you, but we want both of you to come up, and any other members of your family that you want to come up. So we want you to be here. So let, let's move now. I wanted to get a business person, somebody who, uh, somebody who, can tell us what it really means uh, to be a, to have an investment on Grand Lake and have something like this uh, happen. So I asked Shelly Martin if she would come up to Mom's campground, I think, if she would come up and talk about the impact, John, that you and Edie have had on her business and on the other businesses around Grand Lake. Shelly? I'm going to follow in some big names, and I'm just kind of a small town girl. So I'm going to give you a little bit of information about our group and tell you what brought us to Disney. And um, there's eight of us sat here. Normally there's about 30 of us that all feel together. Um, we started going to Winoka years ago. We liked the sand. Our kids were riding their four-wheelers as they got older. We kind of got away from the four-wheelers and got into the bigger toys and started building Jeeps. And we've been coming to Disney now. This will be our sixth year. Um, six years ago, John and I came down here for Rocktoberfest. He was driving his Jeep, and I had a little Ranger. And we pulled into Hogan's, and we were camping down at Russ's place. And when we were sitting there around the campfire, I said to John, I said, Honey, I said, can I drive next time we go out? And he goes, where? And I said, next time we go out, can I drive? He goes, you can drive the parking lot. <laughs> I said, mark my words, before we come back, I'll have my own Jeep. And I went, and one. <laughs> and God forbid that I get one. We had so much fun wheeling together now. All of us wheel together. We come down here. And one of our friends says, you've got to come back for a big meat run. You've got to come back and see what this is like when the really big bouncers come in. And so five years we've been coming here and we've been wheeling. And a year ago, things happened and we decided we'd buy us a place and build a campground. And everybody says, what on earth are you thinking? And I said, the thing that is so phenomenal about what we do, and we're just small rigs, we don't have the big stuff like John and Edie have. But what is so amazing about this sport is that parents with their children in car seats are bringing them down here to wheel. There are 85-year-old men building bouncers and coming here to wheel. It's an all ages, all races, <laughs> all over the nation 
it's a draw for all of us. It's a passion that we have. It's not going away. It's only going to keep growing. And I'm very proud to say that this is our one-year anniversary because Big Meat Run made us property owners here. Six years from now, John and I get to retire into Disney, and then we're going to spend the rest of our lives here. Our kids come. Our friends' kids come. Our grandkids will come. And I cannot wait to enjoy this time. John and Edie and your families, thank you for everything that you've done to make this possible. Cool. That's a great testimony, and there's more of those stories out there from people who have been impacted by what y'all have done. We really, really, really do appreciate it. Okay, it's my honor now and pleasure to introduce uh, our representative from the State Tourism Commission. Uh, I, I love being around Chuck. He promotes uh, our area well, but he also promotes the state of Oklahoma. So join me in welcoming Chuck Perry. As soon as Shelly got done, I looked at Dr. Cox and said, how the hell is somebody supposed to follow that? <laughs> <laughs> Guess who got it? And I said, I hope it's you and not me. <laughs> the representative was next, Chuck, but I chose you just to do that. We didn't know the order, so, but anyway, you know, I know it's your day, John and Edie, that you guys, this is wonderful, but she just a, did a wonderful speech for Oklahoma Tourism. We appreciate that very much. Um, as a representative of tourism and recreation for the state, I get to see and hear about a lot of events. And, and one that comes to the forefront quite often is the rock runs down here. It, it is truly amazing what athletes you folks really are, what mechanics you really are, and, and the way you spend money in our communities. That's what tourism is all about, okay? And, and yeah, I live on Grand Lake, and I, I promote Grand Lake, but I also represent the state. And from the state director, from state tourism, we want to thank you folks for what you have done, for the economic impact you have brought to Grand Lake. We <coughs> appreciate folks, grassroots people, that, that put together something like this, have a passion for it, and, and get it to grow like you all have. You know, Shelly offered to give me a ride. If I got it, I'm going to be down here. I'm going to get on the ride. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I may get a Jeep. I don't know. They're addicted to well, our story's a little similar, my wife and I too. I, I got a Harley and she said, can I ride it? And I said, what? <laughs> <laughs> so a year or so later, she got one. So I understand your, your pain, but truly, we do appreciate what you've done. Uh, we recognize that a lot of folks that, that probably uh, you know, don't get to see it and, and don't experience it, still understand what it does for our community. And we appreciate y'all so much. So thanks for being here. You're welcome. Okay, now uh, now we do have our very distinguished state representative, Doug Cox, to come up and say a few words. Thank you, Representative. <laughs> well, thanks everyone. Thanks everyone for being here and all that you do here. Uh, on behalf of uh, Governor Fowler, Lieutenant Governor Lamb, uh, you know we're going to be blessed with a great weekend this weekend weather-wise. But it is that time of year, and as you know, we had a couple tornadoes Wednesday night. <laughs> Uh, the governor and lieutenant governor toured those areas yesterday and today they're meeting with FEMA, but they send their regards. Uh, like some of the others, uh, until I was elected as a state representative about 10 years ago, I wasn't that aware of rock crawling. But that quickly changed. I found myself trying to be more or less a mediator between Russ Hogan and previous uh, GRD. <laughs> <laughs> No, either one of them, I feel kind of like a punching bag. <laughs> you know? uh, but I uh, managed to kind of work things out and uh, did some legislation and prevent being uh, uh, part of our state highway from some of the rules and regs and made several calls to the Department of Public Safety working with the Highway Patrol. But when it really uh, drove home to me what we have going on here was I stopped for gas one evening up here, kind of driving around the district, and next to me is this beautiful motorhome with a trailer with three or four four-wheelers on there 
And I looked over there, and the tag was from the state of Oregon. Now, you know, our fishing tournaments get lots of publicity and press, and, but I got to thinking, I don't think I've ever seen anyone in the fishing tournament, this is before we had Bassmaster, come all the way from Oregon. So I got to thinking, this is a real economic engine for our area. And then followed that up with one of the GRDA Lake Patrolmen sent me a picture last year from the top of the dam looking down at all the vehicles. And I said, you know, this is, this is an economic engine. This truly is part of tourism. And, and uh, Commissioner Perry kind of underestimated himself in the job he does. He does a great job for us. And tourism is our number three economic engine in this state. <coughs> Gas and oil, agriculture, tourism's number three. But rock crawling has been kind of under the radar screen for everybody, but you guys are changing that, and we're going to change that. And while I, I do not have, I, I regret, a proclamation or a trophy or a blue ribbon to hang on you and each one, and each one of, of you guys that are here and, and with your vehicles, I do place to you that I'm bringing the support of not just myself, but the entire legislature of the state of Oklahoma, that we're there to help you and do anything that we can to make this bigger and better every year and grow the economic impact on the great state of Oklahoma. And thank you very much. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to start out with the chairman of the uh, Grand River Dam Authority, a good friend of mine, a guy I've worked with for the past 25 or 29 years or something like that, and I get the pleasure of working with him again in helping to promote the lake, uh, Mr. Tom Kendall, the chairman of the GRDA. I have worked with Rodney for 29 years. He was city manager in Owasso. My, my wife was a former mayor of Owasso. And for any of you that are participants in the rock craw uh, crawling uh, events, I'd like to have you give me a little help after the event here and have you explain to Mayor Fallis and to Rodney that rock crawlers do not wear neckties. <laughs> <laughs> Rodney just has a horrible time with that. He hasn't quite got into the swing of things since he's been here. So if you all can explain that, it would really help us. As chair of the Grand River Dam Authority, we have 23 counties that we service with electric. We sell electricity to our cities, to our largest industrial park in the United States, the uh, Mid-American Industrial Park down at uh, uh, Pryor. And as some have referred to uh, earlier, GRDA was not always behind these kind of things. I'm here to tell you today, our CEO, Dan Sullivan, our Tourism Commission, <laughs> our state <laughs> legislature, our largest electric customer, the Northeast Oklahoma Rural Electric Co-op, the mayors of these cities. Our rocks are here 52 weeks of the year and you are welcome every week. <laughs> Brian Edwards, our chief uh, of Lake uh, Enforcement and, and Lake Operations, and Rodney and I were on a little tour this week seeing what we could do in the future on facilities to make this a bigger and better event. Just prior to this, we were meeting with a gentleman with the Big Bass Bash. In two years, we would have grown a, an amateur tournament to the largest fishing tournament in the entire world. We'll be right here every week, every year in July. We want this to be the premier <coughs> rock crawling event anywhere in the entire world at Grand Lake of the Cherokees at Disney and Langley, Oklahoma every single year. We don't want to be second to anybody anywhere. <laughs>
And I can never have the opportunity to speak to anybody that I don't like to leave with saying, get to know our people. Companies think it's in vogue to call their employees associates. Some of them call them partners, call them lots of things. What I love to say with our people, call them what you want, but just call. They will respond. When you need them, they're there, we're there. Let's grow this event to the biggest in the world. Thank you. Okay, next is the uh, president or executive director. What's your time, Russell? What do you want? Seven. <laughs> and next is his honor, Rusty Fleming. <laughs> You know, I'd like to say that I know John Sumner, but I don't. <laughs> but it's not my fault. I've been trying to expose him for five or six years, but he won't return phone calls. He's kind of a humble guy. But I got to where I really thought I knew the voice on that Andrew machine. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was like, this is really a cool deal, and uh, we'd like to do a story for you. You know, in the paper, kind of talk about uh, how it got started and all this other stuff. And uh, but you know, economic development is all in the eyes of the public. And as uh, Tip O'Neill once said, all politics is local. And when you know it's economic development, and the rock crawlers are in town, is when you go to research and they're out of beer. <laughs> <laughs> it would be that the, 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 in your camp? <laughs> we might know the dates a little better so that we don't run out of beer. Okay, and the same is true of food and everything else. And uh, you know, I, I also uh, wrote a piece last week about the first few times I went across that dam and I looked down there and I saw what you guys were doing. And I've been a full time resident since '81. I was kind of wondering what, what kind of stuff you were on. You know, but, uh, I, I gotta tell you, you know, as the events have grown, and for a community like we have here, who at one time didn't open until Memorial Day weekend, and the last one that left after Labor Day turned out the lights. <laughs> you guys have been a breath of fresh air, all of you. And, you know, the various ones that have invested in this event, uh, what they've done in Disney to try to, to host the event, it can all be better, and we hope that it will be in the future. But that's not what we're here to talk about today. We're here to say thank you, John, the event you birthed. And I know a lot of people have a lot of input and contributed as well. I mean, you don't, don't do everything on your own, but we do know that every idea has a, has a father, and you're the man, dude. Thank you. <laughs>
The Grand River Dam Authority also serves, I think, 75 of the 77 counties. Uh, and, and it's just a great asset for the state of Oklahoma. We have great leadership in Mr. Kimball, and we have great leadership in the gentleman I'm about to introduce who has something that he wants to present uh, to the Sumners. So would you please join me in welcoming uh, Dan Sullivan. Thank you, Rodney, and I just wanted to say that, uh, as Chairman Kimball mentioned a moment ago, uh, there's really a, a, what I hope you will see is a new vision of GRDA and our cooperation with everyone in this area, uh, particularly in looking at how we can help foster economic development and economic growth around this lake. Uh, for the last 80 years, Grand River Dam Authority has been tasked with First building uh, the dam that you see here, and then for the last 75 years, operating that and providing electricity, providing water, and providing a lot of other services, uh, not only to the people that touch directly on Grand Lake, but as Rodney said, 75 of 77 counties in Oklahoma receive uh, power that we generate in some form or fashion. And most people don't know that, and, and we're, uh, looking at doing a better job of communicating that economic benefit to all of the homans. But I think what we see here today is that it's a great demonstration of when we all come together for common purpose, and that's to see that all of the, the land and all of the area around this lake is used for some purpose uh, that really provides good recreation opportunities, whether it's on the water, off the water, and, and in other areas around here. I spent the better part of the day uh, with uh, Chief Edwards and we were out driving around. I, I had uh, my security and we had one of our uh, lawyers with us, so I was fully uh, prepared for anything that could come along. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we, uh, we, we went out and, and looked at the area. and it, I mean, you can see from here, if you just look over at the park to see all the, the campers over there, look down below the dam and look at the park is full. Everywhere you look, you'll see vehicles. And this is March. This is not, as, as was mentioned earlier, this is not the height of our uh, tourist season, uh, but these are dollars that are extremely important for every business around here. Uh, every gallon of gasoline and fuel that's sold is, is a tremendous benefit. Every uh, item of food, every can of beer that's purchased, uh, every, everything that's done and consumed in a reasonable and responsible way. <laughs> but but the, uh, the, the, main thing I, the main thing I want to say on behalf of GRDA is we are very grateful for the effort that you all have put into organizing this, to having this uh, event here, and we're grateful for everyone showing up, and we want you to have a good and safe time. That's our goal, uh, because we want you to come back. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we know that uh, the, the folks that are involved in this event have uh, demonstrated uh, their recognition of the fact that they want to be good stewards of this location and uh, the opportunities that they have. We've put together a proclamation for both of you uh, that I'd like to read. It's a little long, but I'll try to read it quickly. Okay. Whereas it's the desire of the Grand River Dam Authority to recognize those persons who, through their efforts, have made significant contribution to the recreational opportunities and economy in the state of Oklahoma. And whereas John and Edie Sumner founded and have coordinated the Big Beat Run Rock Crawl event for the past 12 years, and whereas the Big Beat Run, through the efforts of John and Edie Sumner, have grown become one of the major attractions on the Grand Lake of Cherokees, drawing in excess of 10,000 spectators to the event. And whereas more than 600 drivers and off-road vehicles now participate in the various components of the event, and whereas the contribution of the Big Meat Run and the additional frolic events it has uh, encouraged to the Grand Lake of the Cherokees area economy has had a significant and growing impact on business brought thousands of visitors to the lake. And whereas John and Edie Sumner have, by their passion and hard work, steadfastly promoted the lake and its beauty to all they contact, and whereas John and Edie Sumner have consistently promoted the run 
as a recreational event for the entire family. And I can tell you, I saw entire families out there today, as mentioned, little kids all the way up. And the run now fills the Lake Erie hotels, motels, and campgrounds, adding thousands of dollars annually to the Erie businesses. And whereas the GRDA wishes to show appreciation to John D. Sumner, now therefore by the authority vested in me as the CEO Director of Investments of the Grand River Dam Authority, I proclaim Saturday, March 28, 2015, as John and Edie Sumner Day on the Grand Lake of the Cherokees. <laughs>